Hello YouTube. Uh, today, as I've promised a few times, we're going to start looking at concept cars. This is one of my favorite categories in my collection. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is chronologically, and we are not going to look at every example that I own of all of these cars. We'll look at the more notable examples, but for some of these I have quite a lot of different versions and it would just go on way too long if I did all of them. So uh, I'll show you the highlights. And as you can see, uh, what I've laid out for this video is too much to fit on screen. Um, this is concept cars from before 1970. And then in a separate video, I'll do a sequel, concept cars from 1970 and later. And uh, we're going to start all the way back in the 1950s. We'll zoom in so we can look at these one at a time. There we go. And the first car we'll look at is the 1955 Lincoln Futura. This uh, is a Johnny Lightning model. I'm sure you know this car. It was redesigned by George Barris to be the Batmobile for the classic TV show with Adam Must. But before it was the Batmobile, it was a very futuristic concept car. 1955 Lincoln Futura. That was designed by Bill Schmidt and John Najjar at Ford. As usual, please excuse all of my mispronunciations in this video. Uh, so that was from 1955, and ironically, even because uh, it wasn't the Batmobile yet, it was just the Lincoln, in the same year, this car came out, which was a Batmobile. This is called the Alfa Romeo Bat 9. Uh, the Bat series was a series of concept cars uh, that tested aerodynamic concepts. They were designed by Franco Scaglione at Bertone, and I think my favorite is the Bat 7. I wish I had a model of that one. But as far as I know, this Bat 9 is the only one available on small scale, and the other Bat cars in 143rd scale are too expensive for me. This is a Hot Wheels. It was really amazing that Hot Wheels did this car. I don't know what inspired them to do it. They only released it once, as far as I know. It's just wonderful. All right. Uh, now there's a big gap. We're going to skip ahead from 1955 to 1964, but we're going to stick with Alfa Romeo. So in 1964, um, Giorgetto Giugiaro at Bertone um, took a Alfa TZ2, which was a racing car, and designed a concept based on its platform, which was this. It was called the Kangaroo. It's not spelled like kangaroo. It's spelled C-A-N-G-U-R-O. Maybe that's the uh, Italian spelling for kangaroo. I don't know. This model is uh, one of the treasures of my collection. It's a penny. These penny models are not easy to find cheap, but they're really wonderful quality. It's got opening doors. It's got a real spare in the back. It's got an opening hood with a lot of metal engine detail. It's all metal construction. Penny cars are just beautiful. So there's the Alpha Kangaroo, again designed by Jujaro in 1964. Um, next we're going to go to 1965 and we're going to skip over to Ferrari. At this time Ferrari was successfully racing the 250 LM Le Mans car. And in 1965 Aldo Brovarone at Pininfarina designed this Dino, oh no, excuse me, this wasn't um, Brovarone. This was uh, at Pininfarina, but I'm not sure who this was. Somebody at Pininfarina designed this. It's a Ferrari 250LM Stradale Speciale. This was a concept, it was never put into production. Uh, it was basically a 250LM with a big domed window on the back and it was supposed to be a road car. It had interesting doors. Uh, this is a Husky model, British, all metal construction. 
It's a great little model. You can probably find these pretty easily on eBay. And I have a great friend, Wayne, in Wales, who is also interested in concept cars and is amazing at customizing. So he made for me this, which is the same cast, but it's uh, repainted and detailed to match the actual uh, concept as it was presented at auto shows. It was in this same paint scheme, white with blue stripes. He's detailed the engine. He's put a Ferrari badge on there. We've got details on the front. Just a beauty, 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 beauty. And this is the first one for which I also have a larger scale model I'm gonna show you. Uh, so this is a 143 scale. This is, let's see, Pola Toys. Uh, I have a bunch of these vintage 143 models. I don't really know a ton about them, but they're all really cool. So this one has opening doors. It's got these opening roof panels, which made access to the inside easier. That was a really interesting detail. Um, the front opens, and that would be the luggage area, I suppose, a frunk. And the back opens like a clamshell. You can see there's heat shielding. And underneath the heat shielding, a V12 engine and a spare wheel. This is a beautiful model. These 143 models, a lot of the modern ones, um, I can't afford. They're more expensive than smaller scale, but these vintage ones are just great. So again, that's Pola Toys 250 LM Stradale Speciale from Pininfarina. Uh, this is going to be a long video, I can tell already. All right, staying with Ferrari in 1965 um, came the Dino Berlinetta Speciale, designed by Aldo Brovaron at Pininfarina. That was the original design for the Dino road car. This is a tiny model from Penny. Again, hard to get or else I would have one in better condition. About 166 scale and I have a large scale model of the same car here, which will be better to show off the details. This you'll notice, it looks a lot like the uh, Dino as it was produced, but there's a couple little changes. It's got this model's got opening doors. It's got great wire wheels uh, This is a dinky model This one might be Vintage it might be a reissue. I'm not sure It's got an opening rear deck with the engine and the spare But the really interesting thing about this car was the treatment on the front. It was this in entire glassed in nose uh, I, it was probably plastic, I guess, but a transparent nose with headlights behind it, and that was abandoned for the production Dino. Okay, now that's done with 65, moving on to 1966. We're going to go back to Alfa Romeo, and we have a car called the Scarabio, or Scarab. Um, this was, uh, let me look at my notes designed by Sergio Sartorelli at OSI, which we'll hear about again. OSI was an interesting Italian car maker in the 1960s. So this is an alpha concept. This model is by Guisval, opened in the front like this. I have another similar version of this car also from Guisval. This one is a little bit fancier. You'll see it has the insert headlights. The front panel opens just the same, but also the rear opens to show the engine. Unfortunately, the way it's constructed, it doesn't want to stay up. It just falls down like that. These are pretty rare, these Guisval cars. Uh, I'd love to have one of these in mint condition, but I'm happy to have the ones that I do. Okay, sticking with 1966, we're going to leave Italy behind for a minute and go to England. We have a Jaguar. This is a Jaguar XJ13. 
It was designed by Malcolm Sayer at Jaguar, and it was a prototype for a car they were thinking of running at Le Mans. It's got a mid-engine design. It's got a V12 in there, I believe. This is a Hot Wheels. It's a um, Hot Wheels, uh, what did they call these series? Uh, 100, Hot Wheels 100% and I wish they still made them. They're really nice. All metal, rubber wheels, little detail on the bottom even. No moving parts on that one. Okay, 1966 Jaguar. Uh, moving on to 1967, back to Italy and back to OSI. We have, this is a really weird one, one of the weirdest. It's called the OC Bisiluro, which translates from Italian as Silver Fox. You can see it looks like a like an airplane or something. It's basically got two uh, kind of pontoons connected by a wing in the front. I don't know a heck of a lot about this car, but it's one of the strangest concepts. This also is a penny model. Pretty good shape too. And in 1967, also came out one of my favorites, back to Ferrari. This was designed by Paolo Martin at Pininfarina. It's based on a Dino 206 race car. It's called a Dino 206 Competizione. And uh, it had gull wing doors. It had wings on the front and the back. It wasn't very practical. I think uh, James Glickenhaus owns the actual concept car right now. This model is a Kyosho. It's probably the most accurate and small scale. I'm going to show you a couple others. This one is from Speedy, a vintage model in the correct yellow. And this one is Penny, upside down. Also vintage, a little smaller. All of these are great models of this car. Don't be fooled into getting it in red because it's a Ferrari. The actual car is in yellow. Here I also have some larger scale models, so we'll put the little ones away. And we have this is, um, let's see, it says Minitech on it. I thought for some reason this was made by Kingstar. It's a 143 model. It's, um, it's got the engine opening in the back. So a metal, it's got these funny things which aren't on the real car, but they're buttons and they pop the doors open. Spring-loaded doors, pretty cool, huh? And there's another common model that's sort of the same car. This is another vintage model, and this one is Corgi. The funny thing about this, it's yellow like the Dino Competizione. It's got the wings on the front and the back like the Dino Competizione, but it's not a Dino Competizione. The body shape of this is the Dino 206 race car. So I think they probably, uh, Corgi was probably going to make the Dino 206 race car, and then they saw the, the Competizione concept, decided the look with two wings was pretty cool, and added them to this. This car has um, opening doors, and it's got a spare in the back, but that does not open. This is an extra old one. It's got red hubs. Anyway, nice Dino. Uh, in 1967, another one that you probably know is a Lamborghini Marzal. This is a classic Matchbox casting. The Marzo was designed by Marcello Gandini at Bertone and provided inspiration for the production Espada. Uh, the doors on the Marzo and the back window are some of the interesting features in that car. Okay, moving on to 1968. Here is another penny model. This one's broken. It's supposed to have a big wing sticking up here in the middle. This was a prototype for a, a race car that was never put into production, even limited production. I don't know who specifically designed this one. It came from Bertone, and it's called a Panther. I know very little about that one, actually. Uh, so let's move on. Also in 1968, 
back to Giorgetto Gigiaro, he had left, by this time he left Bertone and he set up his own design business called Ital Design. So one of the first big cars that he made was this. It's a Bizzarini Manta. Uh, the Bizzarini Manta is a really cool shape. Um, this is not the best, most accurate version of this car. If you look up the real thing, it kind of looks lower and flatter. This one is Corgi, Whiz Wheels. And this is another one that my friend Wayne in Wales has custom painted for me to match the color of the actual original concept. If you buy this on eBay, you'll find a lot of them are pink and purple. They're really kind of ugly. Okay, um, in 1968, uh, also from Ferrari, let's see, where does this one go? There we go. Ferrari uh, revealed a concept called the P5. It was designed by, here it is, designed by uh, Leonardo Fior, uh, Fioravante at Pininfarina. This was a really weird car too. Uh, this is a speedy model. I love this model. I wish I had one or two more, maybe one in better shape. But this is the only one I have in the small scale. I do have larger scale versions of P5. Here we have one from uh, Polo Toys. And we can see some of the d weird details in this car better on the larger scale, of course. Going doors, these are clear plastic. Doesn't look great, actually. This car, like that Dino we looked at earlier, had a big clear thing across the front with lights in it. You can see the spare and the engine in the back. It had this weird um, pattern on the rear. So that's a Polo Toys Ferrari P5. And then I have a model that's another um, vintage model that I think is even nicer from Dinky. There's the Dinky. Put Polo Toys back. The dinky, you can really see the light bar across the front really well. It's got, uh, again, going doors, but these are made of metal, a little fancier. The engine and spare details are maybe a little bit better. And here's the weird rear. So that's Ferrari P5, not very well known, this car, especially for Ferraris. Okay, uh, also in 1968, um, Going back to Alfa Romeo, Alfa Romeo had made a car called the uh, P33, or the Tipo 33 Stradale. First they made a, uh, the Alfa 33 race car, then they made the 33 Stradale, which is just a stunning beauty that was put into limited production. But it was so expensive, it just wouldn't sell. So they gave some of the 33 um, chassis to designers to create concepts based on the chassis and the 33 alpha 33 provided a lot of really interesting uh, concepts over the years the first one in 1968 you probably know is the carabo the carabo was designed by marcello gandini at bertone uh, it's Again, named after a scarab. It has kind of scarab beetle coloring. Very clear wedge design was coming into popularity at this point. This is a Kyosho. This is probably the best small scale model of this car. But there are a lot of other versions of this. There's one from Hot Wheels. There's one from Matchbox. There's Corgi. There's a Penny. Um, there's just tons and tons of them. It must have made a big impression when it came out. And I have a large scale version of this one too. This is a Solido, Solido. It's got opening scissor doors, which were on the real car. The real car did have this orange tinted glass, which is pretty strange. It did have an orange stripe across the front. And you can't really tell here, but these were lights on the back i think but this this car this concept had a huge impact this was very influential in future design throughout the 70s um, in the same year 
This one, again, came from Gandini at Bertone. In the same year, 1968, uh, another Alpha 33 was redone by Paolo Martin at Pininfarina, and he produced the P33 Roadster. This is a play art. It's a nice car, metal base, metal body. Uh, the play art put out a bunch of different versions of this. I think there's uh, Corgi 2, maybe a couple others. And another uh, Alpha 33 went to Giorgetto Gigiaro at Ital Design. He took a little longer to send it back. It wasn't until 1969 where he turned in the Iguana. The Iguana is a less well-known concept from Alpha, and this one doesn't even call itself an Iguana. It calls itself a Carina 1700. I don't know anything about Carina 1700, but this is a Tin Toys model. Very cheap construction. It's, as far as I know, the only small-scale Iguana, but I do have a large scale. And this is a Pola Toys. It even has the name Iguana kind of in an Iguana shape on it. Uh, let's see, you've got opening doors, and does anything else open on this? I don't think so. Oh, no, the back does. And we've got the engine in there. So here we go, Alpha Iguana, also based on the 33. And uh, now we're into 1969 um, with the Iguana. We're going to go back to Ferrari. And this is a lesser known Ferrari concept. It's the Ferrari 512 S Berlinetta Speciale. This one was designed by Filippo Sapino at Pininfarina. And it's this. This is a vintage Hot Wheels, a red line. If you remember, um, this guy, uh, let's see, Filippo Sapino, didn't he do one of the earlier ones in our list? I can't even remember now. In any case, this is a really great red line casting. I love it. They're, uh, this Every once in a while, you can get lucky and score one for pretty cheap on eBay, but sometimes they go for a ton of money. It has two moving parts. The back opens, and it's got a molded metal engine in the back, and then this front opens, and it's got a cockpit detail. So this is great. Um, what I suggest, if you want to get one of these, and this is a similar approach that I took with this car and also with the Redline Porsche 917, is buy one without the window on eBay. It'll sell for a lot less, but it's really easy to get a replacement window also on eBay for cheap and just pop it in yourself. I don't customize cars. I don't drill them apart, but because the hatch opens you don't have to take it apart to replace the window this car the actual concept was yellow and I have another one again detailed by my pal Wayne and here it is he's done a great job giving it some nice paint details here Ferrari uh, he's done the lights properly he's done the motor details he's done suspension beautiful beautiful work i'm so lucky that i have a friend who can do this stuff and is willing to send me some of these cars because there's no way i could ever produce something like this by myself okay that's again the ferrari 512 s berlinetta speciale by filippo sapino at pininfarina uh, also in 1969 Paolo Martin at Pininfarina designed the Ferrari Sigma. This is a really rare small-scale model. This one is made by Speedy. I think this one is actually not intact. I think the wing has been replaced, perhaps, and it, maybe it's been repainted. Uh, in any case, Paolo Martin designed this as a racing concept that incorporated a lot of safety features of course, racing back in the 1960s was extremely dangerous. So this 
car had uh, safer gas tanks, um, safer crash protection, all kind of safety features, but unfortunately it was never made, but the safety features eventually found their way into real racing. And I have a large scale version of this. The little one is from Speedy, and the big one is from Mercury, which is the parent company of Speedy. It's missing the big wing. You can see the strut for the wing. I have another one of these in yellow, but I think the concept was red. Pretty funny looking flat car. Okay, that's Ferrari Sigma, also 1969 from Filippo Sapino, who just did the Berlinetta Speciale at Pininfarina. He made uh, Abarth. Uh, this is called Fiat Abarth 2000 Scorpione. Uh, or Scorpion. This, again, there's a lot of models of this. There's a Penny, I don't know, there's there's a bunch of them. This one is Ertl. This one is pretty easy to find. It's nice because it has an opening rear with the engine molded inside. But it's a little more angular than the real car. The real car was a little swoopier. So I've got this one too which looks better, I think, but is not so easy to get a hold of. This is a Guisval model made in Spain, another vintage. No moving parts, but nice details. And I've got a large one of these too. This one from Gamma. This does have some moving parts. In the real car, this is the way you got in. The whole front would open up and the back, you got the engine, you got interior details. The real car was red. If you look it up um, on YouTube, you can see videos of engine noise and stuff. It's pretty crazy. I think it had, it didn't have like a really huge engine, but still it had a crazy sound. Okay, and we're wrapping up the 60s now. We're gonna leave Italy. Trust me, we'll be back for plenty from Italy in the 1970s, but for the rest of the 60s, we're going to Germany. We'll start with this. This is a BMW. It's called BMW Spickup. Um, it was because it was supposed to combine qualities of a spider and a coupe. This was designed by Marcello Gandini at Bertone, and this is a play art model. I think this is the only small scale model of this car. I think it was kind of like a Targa roof, maybe. I don't know a ton about this one. And then, also in 1969, Mercedes revealed a car called the C111. They used the C111. I don't know that they ever intended really to put it into production or if they just intended to use it as a test mule for technology. This model is a speedy model. This was the original C111. And then I think they did two more versions over the next few years. And the second version looked like this. This is a 166 scale Shuko model with opening going doors. I love, as I always say, I love these 166 Shukos. It's the second C111 was my favorite of the series. And I've got a large scale of that too from Gamma. So here's that. This one does not have the opening gull wings. It does have opening rear with details. And check out the headlights, check out the lever pop-up headlights. They don't work great, but there they are. And the last one for this video, bringing us up to 1969 and about a half hour long, is from England. Uh, this is the Probe 16. It was designed by Dennis and Peter Adams. I think they made maybe a couple of them perhaps, and you may recognize this car. It was in the movie Clockwork Orange. That's its claim to fame. This model is a Corgi Juniors. I do not have the larger scale Corgi, but I think the larger scale Corgi model has a cool feature where this 
canopy open, slides open on the top. All right, let's put that one back, let's zoom back out. And if you stayed with me for a half an hour as I went through all these cars, I really appreciate it. Uh, the next video will be 1970 and later. Here's your 1960s and earlier concepts. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.